All right, so the first thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to get flash print installed. I'll type in flash print. And I'll probably even just go to download there. That way it'll take me straight to the page. This is flashforge.com download center. So we'll go there. And really we just need to find our operating system. Mine in particular is the Win64. So I'll just hit the download button and get it to the computer. All right, after it downloads, we're just going to go ahead and open the program up. And it'll go ahead and install. So just double click it there and let it do its thing. So for the most part, it's pretty standard installation. Alright, so it's finished. I'm going to go ahead and hit launch flash print and just hit finish. I'll go ahead and close this out too and just so we can see things a little bit better. Alright, so it's going to ask you some simple questions at the beginning. It's going to say, which machine type do you have? Uh, for me, I have the Creator Pro. So I'm just going to select that and then we hit OK. The volume changes to fit that size of printer. Okay, I'll go ahead and maximize that window. That's really all we have right now for for installation let's uh, let's go ahead and get us an STL file though okay so the next thing we'll do is we'll load fusion up and we'll get one of those files all right so here is fusion here's a, a file that I want to 3d print what I'll do is I'll go to the model bar here I'll right click on it and I'll go down to where it says save as mesh all right, so save as mesh, and it's going to ask me a few questions. It's going to say section or selection rather, and then format. We really would switch to an STL. Either one of these is going to be fine. I always just take the top one. For unit type, that can that can change things. I've designed this in inches, and so I'm going to leave it at inches. Now on my Prusa printer, sometimes I I have to change this over to millimeters because that's how the printer handles it best. Uh, that can change up depending on the part. Usually with my flash forge, though, I can leave it at inches. And for refinement, I always make sure it says high. And then really all I can do is I'll just click OK. Then it's going to ask me, all right, where do you want to put this thing? So I'll find whatever folder, right? So for now, I'll just put it out on the desktop and hit save. Okay, that STL is there. So now I'll go back into flash print here. Let me go ahead and get this part off of there. So to get to where we can deal with the model, I'm actually going to click right up here in the top left where it says model file. So I'll click it and then I'll click this little plus sign. And now it's just a matter of navigating and finding the file. So there it is. There's the arc block. I notice it came in really, really tiny. So this is probably one of those where I needed to save it as millimeters. Never fear though. I've got it there. Now I can come over here and, and kind of do some things. Here's scale. And I know that I'm probably going to have to size that thing up quite a bit. So let's just go to 500 on it. That looks a little bit better. And then we can make cuts. We can duplicate if we want. So if I say, you know, I need another one. How many? Let's get three. Three more, rather. So now I've I put too many on there. So I'm just going to come out here. And I'm just going to click on the ones I don't want and press delete. This is our support button, so if we feel like, hey, we need some supports in there, like probably on these holes, I would just click it, and it's going to say, all right, do you want tree types of supports, or you just kind of want supports everywhere? Most of the time I use these, but you can use other ones. It even gives you a chance to do them uh, manually, so you can click add and kind of click them and put them where you want. It's really kind of a neat feature. All right, so let's see, what else? Multi-machine control, wiping tower... There's lots of control things in here for, for this program. The program has evolved over time, so it's actually done pretty well. I can also rotate these. I think that this one would actually do better if I rotated it 90 degrees this way. I'm thinking we would probably do better there. So you can see here, I can actually just click the 90 button too. Right over here, it gives me better control. And then I'll come over here. Really, all I've done is click on the part after I clicked rotate. And then I, I can see the red one. See how it's color coded red? So there, I'll well, say something like that. All right, so now I've got it taken care of. I could just go ahead and hit start slicing down here at the bottom. I can change some of the things, uh, some of the settings. So machine type, 
If I need to, I could change it here. I, I don't. That one's probably one you'll hardly ever have to mess with. The nozzle size is all, almost always going to be 0.4. That's pretty standard. Okay, and it's already got some settings in there for us. So what I'm going to do, I've got it kind of laid out the way I want. By the way, if I hold my right mouse button down, it'll let me rotate. If I hold my left down, it really only lets me select. If I click the wheel in on my mouse, that kind of lets me pan things around. And then we'll just change the view. And see, we can, we can change this kind of like we can in Fusion, right? So I'm going to hit Start Slicing here. Here's a, a few other, because it's Creator Pro, it has material on both sides. I'm just going to say, I, I just... You know, I'm going to use the right side on mine. Um, support should take care of themselves. Now, it, see, it's already got a few settings for us. Like, there's just a standard. Here's for fine. So, you notice that here's the big deal with these. The layer height gets smaller. The more detailed we want it, the layer height gets smaller. Okay, and the shell count is also kind of a big deal as well. That's really, the shell count is, that's... Those are the outside layers. Those are the things that you really see. Uh, so the more shells you have, and generally it becomes a, a more clear part. And so you'll notice if we go to fast, we, we have two shells. And look at the print speed there and the fill density. And fine, we're looking at a 15%. The speed's a lot slower. We have a pretty three shell count. That's not extremely high, but it's it's up there. And then standard, most times it's around 55, 60. So... You notice the layer height though. Standard is 0.18, fine is 0.12, fast is 0.3. So it's a really thick layer. But again, we're trying to get some speed there. So I'll leave it on fine and hit slice. Okay, then it's gonna it's gonna go down here. It's gonna do its thing, slicing the model. And then it's saying, all right, do you wanna do you wanna save it here? So you can do a preview if you want, or you just go to local save, and from there you just save it to your flash drive. And you put your flash drive in, save it there. Notice it saves in the correct format. It's an X3G. Once I hit save, it'll go right to that disk, and we're good to go.